Hello, my name is Matthew Valentini. I'm currently a senior taking E478 VHDL. And today I will be instructing you on how to design and implement a Bitcoin miner using FPGAs. The main FPGA, which is Field Programmable Gate Array, which we will, cover, we will be covering is the Xilinx Spartan 6 Atlas board, also known as the board that we used in class during the labs. So without further ado, let's jump into the design and implementation of the Bitcoin miner using FPGAs. So let's give an introduction about Bitcoin and determine the history about it. Bitcoin is a popular electronic currency mostly used within the deep internet. The deep internet is a place that you wouldn't normally venture off to. We're not talking about Amazon or eBay. We're talking about things like 4chan, stuff that really only big users of the internet would know about and people that, are, that have devoted life skills and practices to the deep internet would know about. One of the main things about Bitcoin that makes it so popular is the fact that it's untraceable. Um, this means that any transactions that go between two, part, two parties cannot be traced by somebody else. Also, nobody up to, up to date has been able to defeat its firewall. Bitcoin is known to be super secure, which attracts a lot of users, especially people that are looking to, unfortunately, get involved in illegal activities. Bitcoin has been known to be used for drug trafficking and weapon trafficking um, and countless other illegal uses, which makes it highly controversial. The United States government is one of many governments that does not condone nor does it illegalize the use of Bitcoin. It really doesn't know where to take a stand yet at this moment, as Bitcoin has not been around long enough for us to really know. Um, many people think that it should be illegal because people think that it will hurt the economy. Other people think that Bitcoin is protected under the First Amendment, being that it is both freedom of speech and the press. Finally, Bitcoin is currently growing in value. Today, the value of one Bitcoin is worth $754.16. Next, we have Bitcoin math. Bitcoin math is largely in-depth and very complex. The formula for Bitcoin is as follows. y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. The value for a is defined as 0, and the value for b is designed as 7. The graph at right is representative of what that function would look like. Next, we have the prime modulo. The prime modulo for Bitcoin is written in all hexadecimal, hence all the amount of Fs. These are numbers, not letters, of course. The base point for Bitcoin is also written in hexadecimal. Although there are many letters, once again, they do represent numbers. The order for a third time is also written in hexadecimal. The reason I cannot provide you those numbers is because the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm has such large numbers that Bitcoin is kept secure all the time. These large numbers make certain that the Bitcoin funds are always in the right hands. As stated before, nobody has been able to break the firewall, and no one has been able to reverse engineer the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm either. Third, we get into mining. Mining is the essential process for Bitcoin extraction. This is where miners get their Bitcoin. Imagine mining for ore. You may look at a rock, but it's really what you do with the hammer that will get you the ore. So in this, the metaphor here is that the field programmable gate array is your hammer. It is your, this is where you will get the Bitcoin from the deep internet. In order to mine Bitcoin properly, you must validate blocks, which we will get to in just a second. The blocks are what holds the Bitcoin and validating them allows the Bitcoin to be extracted. Furthermore, there are two different types of mining. The first type of mining is pooled mining. In pooled mining, multiple competitors mine Bitcoin together. Yes, they are competitors. They are competing to see who can get the most. But that comes with a catch. They may mine the most Bitcoin, but in a pooled mine, the Bitcoin is divided equally among the competitors. So in essence, it does not pay out as well as solo mining might, but your odds of getting Bitcoin are vastly increased. In solo mining, there is only one miner. This is a situation where the winner does take all as there is only one winner. 
The downside of solo mining is that it takes much longer to find Bitcoin and even longer to extract them. As stated earlier, we are now at blocks. Blocks are the key source of Bitcoin. Each block holds about 25 coins. Blocks can be connected together in what is known as the blockchain. The miner must create their own blockchain that suffices their needs. Unfortunately, the process behind creating a blockchain is complicated. The reason why it is complicated is because you must find the nonce value. The nonce value satisfies the SHA-256 cryptographic hash function. The word nonce is defined as an adjective to which the following noun can only be used on one occasion. This is to say that each block can only be used once, despite there being multiple blocks. To go back to the SHA-256 algorithm for just a second, that stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. The Secure Hash Algorithm is a very powerful tool. The Secure Hash Algorithm is a very powerful tool used for storing passwords and writing online signatures. What it does is it hashes. Hashing is the process of allocating a value for multiple objects under the premise that equal objects should have equal value. Blocks containing 512 bits are used to create the 256-bit output. This 256-bit output is the reason why it is called the Secure Hash Algorithm 256 function. Continuing on, we go into hash math. Hash math is the process of being able to validate a block. These equations all have different uses. The first equation at top left is used to find the nonce value. The second equation at middle left is used to provide the difficulty of mining the Bitcoin. The third equation at left is the probability of a successful mine. Finally, the equation at top right is the anticipated time the mine will take. As you can see, the values of these equations will be very large. The difficulty of the mines has increased since 2010 and it is continuing to increase to this day. The reason behind this is because as equipment has gotten more technological and more advanced, users w should have had an easier time mining Bitcoin. But in order to keep Bitcoin secure, the difficulty had to also be increased. Now to get into the actual hardware of mining Bitcoin. These are your field programmable gate arrays. Shown is a flowchart of how a field programmable gate array works and the different types of field programmable gate arrays that are available to any user. A field programmable gate array is an integrated circuit that can be configured by the user. It uses electronically programmable switches in order to tell itself what to do. The user controls these switches. For instance, here is the Xilinx Spartan 6 Atlas board. The Xilinx Spartan 6 Atlas board is the board that we used in labs. It is a member of the EPLD family. EPLD stands for Erasable Programmable Logic Device. The reason it is erasable is because it can be programmed more than one time. The eight switches on the bottom control the program. They are implemented using the input-output pin placement post synthesis function, which can be found within software. So how can we use this Xilinx Spartan 6 Atlas board to make a field programmable gate array that mines bitcoins? Well, there are three different steps. Step one, you must load the firmware. The recommended firmware to use is the Antminer S9. The Antminer S9 is just built upon the Antminer S7 and Antminer S5. The Antminer S9 has a hash rate of 14 terahashes per second, a power consumption of 1,375 watts, a power efficiency of 0 0.098 joules per gigahashes, a rated voltage of approximately 13 volts, and an Ethernet connection. It is currently the top level firmware available on the market. The second step in the order is to run software. Now you can't just run any software of course, you must be able to run one that is compatible with your operating system and also can be used in conjunction with the Antminer S9. The recommended software to use is the Multiminer. 
the multi-miner program will allow all extracted Bitcoin to show up and be placeable within an account. Which brings us to step three, profit. Why would anyone go through this whole process without wanting to profit? This is where you take your Bitcoin and place the extracted Bitcoin within a Bitcoin wallet. Now there are multiple different kinds of Bitcoin wallets, all of them applications just like any other. Notice the QR code at the top right of the diagram. This code can be used to transfer Bitcoin from one account to another. Now going back to what we said at the beginning, the Bitcoin is untraceable. Yes, the Bitcoin can be found in your account, but if one person transferred Bitcoin to another account, nobody else would know who it was. The only way to be able to tell would be to get their account number and see if their account went down by a specific amount that you by a specific amount that was transferred over the internet to a different account. All of this together brings us to our conclusion. Number one, mining Bitcoin is not impossible. Yes, it is highly sophisticated and very complex, but there are programs and hardware that can be used by anybody to mine Bitcoin. Second, Bitcoin are highly developed. Bitcoin are not just something out of the internet. They were developed with the sole intention of not being traceable and, be, and being highly functioning. Third, field programmable gate arrays are programmed by the user. The user has the call to what the FPGA does. It is up to the user to design the program. And fourth, you can make your own miner. It is very possible at home or at school to create a Bitcoin miner using the materials available. If you follow the process and get the right firmware, the right software, and the right Bitcoin wallet, mining Bitcoin may take a lot of time, but it is possible nonetheless. Again, none of this is easy, but it was not meant to be easy either. It was only meant to be possible as an online currency that anyone can use. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you've learned something here today about how Bitcoin is mined. And I hope you go out and try it yourself if you're very interested. Goodbye.